Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me here at Brave New Hollywood. My guests are the filmmaking brothers behind the movie The Wretched, Drew and Brett Pierce, and the star of the film, Jameson Jones. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thanks How's for going? having us. <laughs> you guys, that's some unique and successful film you guys have made and released. Who wants to start talking about, you know, how the film came about, how you set out about making it? I mean, it was more Drew and I just were, ex we wanted to make a horror film and we wanted to kind of try to reinvent the witch for movies, like as a creature with rules and kind of its own mythology. So we went into it with that in mind and we did a bunch of research into a bunch of different folklore and myths about witches. And we found a couple of witches, uh, Black Annie, Black Annis, which is an English myth, which is like a blue-faced witch that lives in a tree and steals children and eats them. And we found another witch called the Boo Hag, which is an Appalachian myth about, which is essentially a skin-walking witch. It's a witch that lives under somebody else's skin. And we just liked those ideas so much that we kind of like meshed them together and then threw in a few rules that we came up with ourselves. And we were just too excited. We we're like, we got to figure out a script and write a script about this thing. Yeah, we kind of we, we kind of wanted to do what we've sort of seen as like the renaissance of like, vampires and zombies and everything sort of developing these rules over the years we just got to talking like there are no rules for witches there it's usually just a ghost story or something related to it so yeah and that's that's sort of what makes it fun to follow along like can the vampire come in do you have to invite him in can you yeah. see him in the mirror like all those sorts of things so we yeah we just started asking ourselves what what would the mythology be for like a witch creature and you guys know your witches wow so <laughs> <laughs> I think this, this is a genre that fans are very passionate about and it looks like you've been pleasing them on top of, you know, getting a few things that you wanted to get into the story. It has a, an interesting story. It's shot beautifully and it's successful. So how long did it take you guys to make the film, to shoot it? Uh, we shot for like a month. It was like 25 days. So it was like over the course of a month. Um, to actually make the movie, it was about three and a half years of torture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, blood, so, yeah. Sweat and tears blood, sweat and, and tears. Blood, sweat and production and yeah. begging people to let, let us make it. Yeah. As you do. Yeah. Yeah, we were up in northern Michigan for about uh, five weeks. And for those of you who are not familiar with Michigan, I'll point it out here to you. It's right, right up here near the tip <laughs> of the pinky. Uh, it's just such a beautiful location on Lake Michigan there. Stunning. And since we have uh, one of your actors here, casting, uh, where did you find your cast? What was that process like? We just walked down Hollywood Boulevard and just asked anybody. To, <laughs> and he was just sitting there. I was just no. sitting there waiting. <laughs> um, I mean, it was a, a pretty crazy casting experience. We, um, yeah, I mean, we, we hired a casting director and... Uh, just started reaching out to people but the, sort of the unique part of it is usually as directors you don't necessarily sit through everybody but Brett and I were sort of determined I think we saw every single audition and when Jameson came in we just fell in love with his performance and thought he totally yeah. got the character and had the vibe mm -hmm. uh yeah, and we, I mean, we took our time with it. I think I bumped into Jameson like maybe a month later and it was, he, it was sort of this like, he had this little slight like sad puppy look on his face, kind of like, so, uh, so what happened with that thing? <laughs> it was just a funny thing. We just hadn't fi finished casting yet and sort of solidified everything. But um, yeah. yeah, it worked well, out. We, we knew Jameson previously to even that process. We had met him because um, through mutual friends, other actors, and he actually came to the table read for the first table read of the script mm -hmm. and read as that part. And we just really liked him from that point on. So that's why he was coming into audition and it eventually worked out. Um, but I mean, honestly, he was our number one pick through the whole thing. I'm not even sure why we did that whole uh, casting process. <laughs> 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 Just to make me sweat. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what was it like uh, for you to be in this project? Uh, 
what do you remember about uh, making it? Well, funny enough, it was my first horror movie. So I was not used to this idea of, oh, you shoot during the day for a little while, and then you switch over to nights, and then you're supposed to try and sleep during the day and be up all night shooting, which was just a, a it's, you feel like a vampire. It's such a weird experience because, you know, I can't sleep during the day. So you go home at seven or eight o'clock in the morning after you're done shooting and you try to sleep for a little while, you sleep for a couple hours and then you're up again and then you go back to set at, you know, five, six, seven o'clock at night. And, and we were shooting in Michigan during a time period where the days were starting to get really long. And so we had a very limited amount of time when it was actually dark. So we had to do a lot of day for night stuff and try to, you know, black out some of the rooms to be able to shoot some of the interiors because the time outside was, was very limited. You could, you could see those moments when the sun was starting to creep in and you're like, we got to get this thing before the sun comes back up. <laughs> And uh, being directed uh, by these two, I'm, I'm going to mute them right now so they can't hear you. Uh, how are they as directors? Uh, well, I've said it a million times already to other people, so it's it's uh, it's no secret. But I, I have to say, this is the this is the most fun I've ever had on a movie. Right. These guys, they they know exactly what they want going in. They've you know scripted it all out. They've figured it all out. They've <clears throat> they put together all their um, shot lists and everything, and they know exactly what they want. The nice thing about that is that they're not married to anything uh, that that couldn't potentially make it better, right? They're they're open to this idea of collaboration, and if the actor comes up with something that's equally as interesting or compelling, or maybe even more so, they're totally open to changing their vision of what that moment was to accommodate that. And so it was. For me, it was just a, a fantastic experience. And it's almost like they share a brain. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think we're Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, like, we're writer-directors, um, and, you know, we're always just looking for the best ideas. So I think one of the first things we did, even with Jameson, and we kind of offered it to the whole cast, but I think Jameson, to his credit, he's probably the only one that really took us up on it. We're like, hey, let us know if there's anything in the script that bumps you, that just feels untrue to the character. And he went through and he had a handful of notes that really helped like little tiny bits yeah. of the scenes. Because at the end of the day, he has to embody the character and believe in the character more than we do. Yeah. And we've spent, we at that point, we had spent a year and a half sort of believing this thing, this person exists and that all of their world exists. But like at the end of the day, he has to be that world, <laughs> you know? So it was cool to, you know, I, we love that sort of collaborative process. Yeah. And uh, t tell us how you two direct. Do you both direct at the same time or divide the job? How does that work? We try to say the same words at the same time and just as we're telling <laughs> him to do it quicker Better. and more, more, more seductive. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a boring answer to be honest is we're brothers, but we get along, you know, swimmingly. Uh, we, yeah. we kind of have, by the time we're big on pre-production, so we do a lot of storyboarding. Uh, I'm, I'm a con concept designer and storyboard artist kind of is my background. So we do a lot of like, essentially pre-production and pre-work and read-throughs and everything we possibly can to sort of know what we're getting into before the day of shooting. Because the truth is everything goes wrong the day of shooting, <laughs> but you at least have all of that sort of pre-planning to fall back on. Right. Um, so yeah, and at that point, we've talked to it to nauseam to the point where we both kind of are thinking the same things and can talk to different yeah. departments. So well, it's like it having there's two of us because you kind of get the same answer no matter what, but if Jameson you know, is confused about something or there's concern about something, Drew can talk to Jameson, I can talk to JP or the makeup department, whatever works. So it's, it's just a, you know, it's a benefit to have two of you directing as opposed to one for that reason alone. So, it it right. really is. I mean, I, I saw them often springboarding off of each other and trying to talk out the thing that they had pre-planned and making sure that they were executing the plan the way that they had anticipated it would go. One of my favorite stories on set is there's an area called Video Village where there's this little monitor and that's where the director stands and watches the thing. And everybody's trying to crowd around to see the shot because everybody is responsible for something, right? There's art director is responsible for the way this looks and makeup, hair, everybody's gotta be in there to see what they're responsible for. And so they're fighting for space and there's, uh, there's Drew right close up and 
Brett's sort of off to one side and Drew reaches over and takes Brett around the neck and just brings him right in. And takes- <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, these guys do share a brain. They have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing, amazing. You guys, I also wanted to talk to you about, uh, about John Paul Howard, the young man you cast in this film. Where did you find him? Because he's been getting attention uh, in this film. Yeah, he's he was amazing. We um, actually got a self tape from John because he wasn't living in L.A. at the time. Um, he's moved out here since. Um, but uh, yeah, he was in Hell or High Water. He was he had like a bit role in that. And um, we c- just kept coming back to his audition tape. And we had auditioned a ton of people in the room and given them notes. Um, but but uh, yeah, we just felt like he had something that sort of we were really nervous about that character not feeling sort of likable because it's a kid going through problems. Yeah. Um, and, and JP's a very likable guy and was able to kind of like thread that line of, you know, a kid that's acting out, but also a kid you learn to kind of like. And he brought in a, like an authenticity to sort of this kid with problems. You know, I think there's sort of this like um, this negative vibe. You worry about you know, like an angsty teen is sort of the thing. But I feel like he just brought so much to it that it just felt grounded in true um yeah and i mean obviously it was great to have jameson like a super experienced like and jameson aside from being an amazingly talented actor he's also like an acting coach so they were just running those scenes constantly and i yeah. think they just you know not that elevated all that stuff and, and brought it up much higher and you know on top of that they became really good close friends like off times and we're spending a lot of time together and i think that just helped create the father-son sensibility that comes across so well in the film Come on, Ben, you're smarter than this. Your mom raised me. I just missed a stupid f***ing dinner. Shit. You are going to apologize. He said I'm sorry. I'm going to bed. You are going to sit there and apologize to Sarah. I'm not apologizing. Some bitch you're sleeping with. I also wanted to ask you about the success of the, of the movie. Uh, it's successful. People wanted to go see it. The success of it is unique. Uh, can you talk about the release uh, for the film and uh, why it became the success it has become? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really special for us. It's been like a snowball rolling downhill. It just keeps picking up steam. I mean, initially, we, we brought it to festivals and we got, you know, a couple of great reviews from Variety and we're like, yay, we got attention. Um, but And then from there, we sold it to IFC and kind of planned the release. But we never obviously anticipated that it would just catch on like wildfire we didn't expect audiences to like we knew we had a movie that audiences responded to doing the festival thing but we didn't know the word of mouth would grow so quickly and so rapidly like it's sort of yeah. caught on in a way that like at one point like you know how much does it matter if you get a really good review when like people are just telling their friends like you've got to see this movie yeah, I think it was it was a thing where like the first week happened and it was like we had a good turnout in our 12 theaters. And honestly, in our heads, we were kind of like, oh, man, I really hope we get a second week to play in theaters. And it just all of a sudden we just noticed this shift where just everything took over. It was just like we were getting hit hit up by people constantly from even all around the world about watching the film. And then IFC was just like we want to put it in 45 drive-ins and we put it in the 45 drive-ins and then it just exploded. So it's like, honestly, it's, it's unfathomable. I'm not sure how it happened. <laughs> it's, it's a good, uh, good problem to have pandemic yeah. and releasing a film. Yeah. yeah. The silver yeah. lining in all of this. It's really, yeah. 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 And yeah. somehow we made like the perfect kind of drive-in movie. Cause there's actually a bunch of other movies that are sort of released, but I think, the other reason why this thing has sort of risen to the top is it's kind of that creature feature. It's sort of what drive-ins became famous for are these sort of like event kind of fun, you know, catchy things. It, it's, it's kind of a great nighttime movie. Yeah. And it's yeah. nice to be that movie that's kind of like everybody's, you know, everything's a little, you know, dark times right now with Corona. So it's nice to have a safe way to enjoy the film at a drive-in and be kind of a release, or you can watch it at home on VOD. Um, it's just nice that we get to kind of, be that we were concerned about at first like can we be too excited about our movie coming out and doing well and and a good friend of mine pointed out you know they're like you know what when things aren't so great you need these little moments of happiness and these things that make you feel better and makes other people feel better other people need an escape they need sort of a way to you know (laughs) they need an escape from their normal lives right now so it's perfect 
Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, joining me for this chat. Thank you for making the time. The movie yeah. is called The Ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> an actor always comes prepared yes. the film is called the wretched it's out in guy rooms uh, here in california also and i hope to talk to you guys again on your future projects oh thanks Andy. yeah thanks so good much. talking to you, Thank you guys thanks, thanks for having us